Hi everyone, welcome to the presentations on carbohydrates. This is the second module as per your syllabus and in this module you will be learning about the structure, classification and biological functions of uh, carbohydrates in general and uh, monosaccharides, disaccharides and polysaccharides uh, with special mention on the biologically important monosaccharides, disaccharides and polysaccharides. Apart from that, we will also be learning the analytical techniques, both qualitative and quantitative techniques to uh, analyze the presence of uh, these molecules in the biological, biological uh, samples. Okay. Now, what are carbohydrates? <coughs> carbohydrates can be defined as car polyhydroxy carbonyl compounds. That means they are carbon based compounds. Uh, carbohydrates will have a chain of car uh, carbon with uh, polyhydroxy that is hydroxyl means hydroxyl group okay OH groups that is more than one carbonyl group carbonyl in the sense C double bond o, okay so C double bond o, it could be either in the form of aldehyde or keto so three important uh, points you can come up with regarding the structure of carbohydrates one is they are carbon based compounds or contains a chain of carbon Okay, you can see here there is a typical example carbon based compounds okay then uh, secondly they have polyhydroxy that is they are polyhydroxy compounds so to every carbon uh, is attached a hydroxyl group okay you can see here except except one and one of the carbon in this ch whole chain it is in the form of carbonyl it is in carbonyl uh, form okay that is c double bond o. The C double bond O can exist either in ketone form or in aldehyde form. That is either it can be CHO or CO. Okay. So, here it is CHO. So, we have a chain of carbons. One of the carbon is in carbonyl form and the rest of the carbons it is attached to hydroxyl group. So, this is the typical carbohydrates. Uh, the rest of the groups are usually hydrogen to ful uh, fulfill the valency of carbons in each of the number okay so it is polyhydroxy carbonyl compounds or polyhydroxy aldehydes or ketones now uh, basic molecular structure is ch2o n times where n is the number of carbons and usually n is usually greater than or equal to 3 that means the simplest carbohydrate will have at least 3 carbons okay when it is ch2o n times this with n is equal to 3 the um, carbohydrate will be ch c3 h6 o3 that will be the form and here the uh, carbohydrate uh, represented here it is with 6 carbons is it 1 2 3 4 5 6 so it is c6 h12 o6 it is glucose clear okay this is a glucose so it is uh, polyhydroxy aldehydes or ketones with the molecular formula CH2O n times. So, what are the different fu the functions of carbohydrates in the biological world? When we speak about the uh, functions, we can see that the most important one is carbohydrates, they serve as energy stores or source of energy. They are fuels and they are metabolic intermediates. The most important uh, aspect is they are considered as a fuel for uh, various biochemical reactions going on in the body okay they are stores of energy the source of energy and uh, they are precursors for many organic compounds um, we can see that uh, the cells of all organisms are coated in a dense and complex coat of carbohydrates and uh, they these uh, carbohydrates they also link up with proteins and lipids to form glycolipids and glycoproteins and these compounds glycoproteins and glycolipids have a very important role in cell membrane synthesis in your cell biology classes you may have learned about the structure the what you call the uh, structure of plasma membrane is in the bilipid uh, bi sorry what you call uh, lipid bilayer membrane uh, and you may have already uh, studied that the glycoproteins and the glycolipids these compounds they play a very important role in the transport of substances across the uh, plasma membrane okay apart from that can see that carbohydrates carbohydrate containing proteins and specific carbohydrate binding proteins they are required for cell to cell interactions and these cell cell interactions and binding it allow the cells to form tissues 
okay uh, even the cell cell recognition is also made possible with the help of a carbohydrate containing compounds the carbohydrates also form a part of the structural framework of dna and rna uh, what is dna and rna dna and rna are the nucleic acid heredit hereditary material isn't it it is deoxyribonucleic acid and ribonucleic acid here the deoxyribose and the ribose they are carbohydrates okay they are monosaccharides actually so carbohydrates play a very important role in the structural framework then um, structural they also form structural elements in the cell walls of bacteria that, and that of uh, plants also as in endoskeleton of uh, sorry exoskeleton of arthropods uh, the cell wall of bacteria it is formed of a uh, compound known as peptidoglycan okay peptido refer to the proteins and glycan refer to the carbohydrate so it is actually peptidoglycan it is a modified carbohydrate and it is unique to the cell walls of bacteria you will be learning the structure of cell walls of uh, bacterial cell wall in your uh, microbiology classes okay uh, in plants you are already familiar with the cellulose okay the cell wall of uh, plants it is formed of cellulose which is a complex uh, carbohydrate okay then uh, exoskeleton of arthropod the arthropod exoskeleton is composed of typical compound which is known as chitin which you have already studied in your over classes okay, isn't it so these are the major functions performed by uh, carbohydrates at various uh, level and uh, now regarding the classification carbohydrates can be classified into three major groups th the or the classes and they are monosaccharides disaccharides uh, uh, sorry what you call the oligosaccharides and polysaccharides depending upon the complexity okay uh, monosaccharides they are compo they they are the simplest of the carbohydrates uh, they are the small um, smallest among the uh, what you call uh, carbohydrates and they contain only like 3 to uh, maybe 9 carbon atoms uh, bound to hydroxyl groups okay and monosaccharides cannot be further hydrolyzed into any uh, carbohydrate units so they are the simplest carbohydrate units when it is broken down it may form carbon dioxide and water or any other such compounds never uh, uh, smaller carbohydrates okay uh, monosaccharides uh, they are sweet in uh, taste crystalline in nature and water soluble uh, they are they uh, based upon the number of carbon atoms as already mentioned it can number of carbon atoms can range from three to nine and based upon that we can have different kinds of uh, 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 monosaccharides triosis which contains three carbon atoms tetrosis with four pentosis with five carbons hexosis six carbons and heptosis seven carbons and likewise okay and each of these it can be further divided into aldoses or ketoses depending upon its carbonyl compound okay if the carbonyl compound of a triose it is aldehyde we call it as a aldotriose on the other hand if the carbonyl carbon exists in the form of a ketone we call it as a ketotriose okay so likewise we have aldotetrose and ketotetrose aldopentose and ketopentose and likewise it goes right we have uh, the typical examples are glucose and fructose glucose is aldohexose and fructose is a uh, ketohexose both contain six carbons while the carbonyl carbon is in aldehyde form in the glucose while it is in the ketone form in the fructose okay both are hexoses in the sense they have a molecular formula c6 h12o6 both have c6 h12o6 molecular formula the difference in the uh, uh, aspect is the uh, with respect to the carbonyl carbon in which form it is existing okay now coming to the oligosaccharides oligosaccharides are carbohydrates which can be further can be hydrolyzed into the monosaccharides well, when this when oligosaccharides are broken down and, or when it is hydrolyzed we can get uh, what you call carbohydrate units okay so thing never happens with the monosaccharide oligosaccharides contain 2 to 10 monosaccharide units okay, so when it is uh, hydrolyzed obviously these monosaccharide units or we can say the monomer monomeric units so the monosaccharide units they get separated how are they linked they are linked by special uh, covalent bonds which are known as glycosidic bonds okay, this, the, the structure and how it is formed we will be learning it in the coming presentations but uh, it contains two to ten monosaccharide units okay uh, they are sweet in nature uh, crystalline and water soluble 
um, depending upon the number of monosaccharide units, oligosaccharides can be disaccharides, trisaccharides, etc. Okay. Uh, the typical example it is sucrose, maltose, uh, lactose, etc. Then um, these are the ones which we are going to learn the structure and the functions. Regarding the polysaccharides, okay, coming here, actually the name saccharides it refers to carbohydrates. Okay, earlier it was thought that all the carbohydrates are sweet in nature, and hence the term saccharides, which which means the sugar, right? But the monosaccharides and oligosaccharides are obviously sweet in taste, but polysaccharides they are not. They are tasteless. They color. They form colloids. When we have already mentioned that monosaccharides and oligosaccharides are water soluble, when we put put when we add monosaccharides and disaccharides into water, we stir it. Actually, it becomes soluble. We may not be able. We cannot uh, pick it up later, isn't it? Nothing is can be visible. Nothing is visible. It becomes completely dissolved. But in the case of uh, polysaccharides, they don't dissolve in water. Instead, they form colloids. Okay, uh, so, so it, we can see the suspended solid particles in the water in the in colloid form. They are high molecular weight compounds. They may con they contain more than 10 to like it may go for 100 and all monosaccharide units that form the polysaccharides. Okay, and again the glycosidic bond here it is again typical nature. Uh, glycosidic bonds they link the adjacent uh, monosaccharide units of in polysaccharides. Okay, example cellulose glycogen starch. We will be learning the structures in detail here later. Okay, yeah, this is the. Um, this is aldosis, this is ketosis, this is the simplest of the um, carbohydrates, monosaccharide. Okay, you can see here three carbon atom. Okay, you have a chain of carbon atoms, uh, and the number of carbon atoms in the carbon chain has to be minimum of three, right? So, this is three carbon containing monosaccharide, and each carbon is attached to hydroxyl group except one which is in the carbonyl form. Okay, and this uh, here it is aldehyde in nature when it is aldehyde you can see it is one at one end and when it is in ketone form it will be in the middle right and you can see here when we number uh, yeah that is a convention by convention carbohydrates have to be numbered following specific set of rules first one is the most oxidized carbon should get the lowest number okay that means uh, oxidized uh, uh, what you call uh, the among in in the carbon chain the most oxidized carbon is the carbonyl carbon right two valencies are uh, attached to oxygen is the two so it is most oxidized carbon right so here you get the number one okay and this one two and this one will go three okay here what happens we cannot start numbering from here because it is in between the chain so what happens we have to number in such a way that the carbonyl carbon gets the lowest number here it is very easy whether we start from here or here it is second carbon here but what about this one six carbon containing okay here we don't have any confusion the CHO will be getting this lowest number but here what happens if we start from here this end it will be five over here isn't it when we start from here it is two so the lowest number if we need to get it in the carbon and oxidized carbon we have to start the numbering from here okay I hope it is clear right so now this is aldo triose this is keto triose okay aldo triose it is glyceraldehyde keto triose it is dihydroxy acetone what is acetone acetone is ch3co ch3 isn't it here it is both the ch3 hydrogen atoms are getting replaced by hydroxyl group that is why it has got the name dihydroxy acetone okay these two molecules are uh, uh, can be formed from uh, glycerol molecule okay glycerol molecule on oxidation okay what is glycerol then i hope you know glycerol you have you may have studied in your uh, um, uh, like uh, lower classes okay glycerol is like uh, ch2oh chOH ch2oh so this is glycerol molecule okay and it is from this glycerol molecule the glyceraldehyde and dihydroxy acetone can be obtained that is on oxidation okay on oxidation of this particular carbon the first carbon over here okay uh, we get glyceraldehyde and 
dihydroxyacetone any of this can be obtained from glycerol so glycerol can be considered as a parent molecule from which the carbohydrates the what you call these these glyceraldehyde and dihydroxyacetone is obtained okay similarly from glyceraldehyde we can obtain the next tetrosis dihydroxyacetone we can obtain the uh, keto triose te tetrosis so uh, although tetrosis can be obtained from glyceraldehyde keto tetrosis can be obtained from dihydroxyacetone can be made from okay that is it so basis for all the uh, uh, this ca this can be considered as basis for the for all the rest of the carbohydrates okay so this is one uh, thing is like numbering of the glucose okay representation of uh, mono uh, carbohydrates especially the monosaccharides in this form it is known as a linear form okay and we may not be able to find uh, these uh, carbohydrates existing in linear form in uh, biological state in biological state in cytoplasm or any uh, in any other system we can see that the these molecules they um, what they call exist in cyclic form which we'll be learning in the coming presentations i hope still here it is okay clear okay so this is what is the carbohydrates is all about uh the what they call isomerism the chiral uh, everything we'll be learning it in the coming presentation okay so this is about general features of carbohydrates we learned about that carbohydrates are polyhydroxyaldehydes or ketones and uh, that is it contains a chain of carbon each of the carbon is attached to hydroxyl group except for one where that one is in the carbonyl form the carbonyl form can be either in aldehyde form or ketone form and when the uh, sugar contains aldehyde as the uh, carbonyl carbon we call it as a aldosis when the carbonyl carbon is in ketone form we call it as a ketosis the basic molecular formula of the empirical formula of carbohydrate it is ch2o n times where n is the number of carbon and n uh, must be equal to or more than uh, 3 right uh, regarding the functions we saw that it serves as a source of energy it uh, their fuels then uh, metabolic intermediates they are precursors for many organic compounds and they act as uh, like uh, with uh, linked with the proteins and the um, uh, like uh, the lipids they have very important role in cell membrane synthesis uh, like um, um, membrane transport cell cell recognition cell cell adhesion etc okay then it forms a part of the structural framework of nucleic acids and also the structural elements in cell walls of bacteria plants and the exoskeletal parts of uh, arthropods okay and now carbohydrates can be classified into monosaccharides oligosaccharides and polysaccharides uh, monosaccharides can be cannot be further um, broken down or hydrolyzed into carbohydrate units uh, oligosaccharides on the other hand when it is hydrolyzed it, it uh, produces smaller uh, uh, produces monosaccharides okay and oligosaccharides may have like 2 to 10 monosaccharide units uh, each linked together by glycosidic bonds polysaccharides on the other hand it may contain tens to, uh, like uh, 10 to 100 or more uh, uh, monosaccharide units and this is the typical structure of uh, uh, carbohydrate and these are all uh, mo uh, what you call monosaccharides we, are, we have given okay so this is aldo triose this is all uh, uh, keto triose this is aldohexose aldehyde and this is ketohexose okay six carbon with, with a keto uh, carbonyl carbon in ketone form so all these are this is a fructose okay all these are given in linear form and we learned how it is being named okay and uh, uh, no, uh, sorry what do you call numbered right and this is about the carbohydrates